Now, hello everybody. Welcome. This is John with House of Tortured Souls Live. This evening I am honored, completely honored, and in all we have the lovely Marilyn Gigliotti with us joining us this evening. Marilyn, thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Oh, well, we definitely appreciate you taking the time for us, for the little people. Um, it means the world to have you here, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing, honestly. I grew up watching you, and when I was, oh, man, I, I'm i trying to re recall how old I was when I first saw you in Clerks, and I'll admit, with a little bit of a crush going on, <laughs> and I just... You know, it's funny, because I hear this a lot, but, you know, it, <laughs> my life does not emulate that. <laughs> well, any, any, any similarities between you and the Veronica? Of, of Veronica, yeah. Um, in some degrees, yes. Um, in the degree that I would be the person to make lasagna for my boyfriend at work and stuff like that. Um, I, I am generally, generally one to maybe care too much sometimes. Um, and would be the one to, uh, for uh, more for other people than myself, it to really think positively for others mm -hmm. um so in, in those ways very much so yeah always kind of uh wearing your what's the expression you're wearing your heart on your sleeve yeah right <laughs> well i can i can appreciate that that's a it, to me that's a good quality unfortunately those are the people who always get hurt the most and get that much more frustrated that much more easily um yeah. but all right so let's go ahead we'll get them all out of the way because <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've had to endure this for many, many years, many, many people. Uh, you know what? But it doesn't bother me. And and if, if and if it did, I shouldn't accept these podcast interviews. I shouldn't have accepted the role. And you know, I could go on and on and on. So well, I you know, appreciate that. Yeah, okay, well I, I'm, I actually am happy to do this. Well, and and as we are. To have you doing this trust me so <laughs> all right so story has it that you were originally cast because you could cry during lines and then obviously we're hired on for your role as veronica from the get-go to begin with <sighs> that movie changed a lot of independent films in my eyes um, whether it was comedy, drama, or just anything independent film to begin with. Um, Kevin Smith, obviously, being the visionary that he is, um, having many different backgrounds in his, his imagery that he used for his thoughts for characters, and it was so relatable, I hate to say it, with so many of the people that I associated with, <laughs> um, and yet you had... You know, you had your sports, you had your your everyday Joe, you had the workers, that you had all this variety of everyday people yeah. all wound up in this one small cast. And it worked out beautifully and was such an underground smash. I mean, a huge success. Huge success. Mm -hmm. How do you feel something like that or what do you contribute or... Uh, I'm I'm trying to I'm I'm at a loss for words. No, I I, I, I get what you're saying. I really do. Um and, and yes, uh from what I was told and from what I keep hearing, you know, on, on different little interviews that I've heard Kevin do as well, that um because I could cry, never mind the fact that Veronica doesn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> um but the thing is though, the monologue that I was doing was just something that was very that is still to this day very close to me, mm -hmm. to my feelings and and my emotions and and what I what I feel many times. Um, I, I call it the middle child syndrome. So I'm a middle child, and I, I definitely don't feel like I'm heard very many times, and not just even within my own family, <laughs> but also out in the world. Um, you know, e even. Even when we're in a group of people and somebody asks me a question, I start to answer it. But then in the middle of that, all this chaos may happen. And it's like, might as well just be talking to the wall because nobody's 
<laughs> the actual response that I'm giving. And sometimes I will just I will just stop talking. Nobody right. knows, nobody will notice. So <laughs> um so that's my relatability on, on that. But but clerks also made it because so many people related to themselves uh -huh. in this film. And the fact is that when you do work a service industry job, be it a convenience store clerk, hairstylist in a salon, um, you know, anybody who works uh, in, in any given store, when you're having to deal with the public, right. you have all those people that actually come through that those doors, and then some. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I myself can relate to a couple of the, the, the customers that were there, so <laughs> that they that they played. So that that's why I feel that the film did so well. So w when they were making this film, everyone's kind of huddled around. You're talking, or maybe during production, or watching it, or after it was released. Did anybody fully think, "My God, we have got a huge film on our hands. This thing is going to blow up." No, um, no, because at the time we just didn't want to fuck up. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I don't think whenever like and, and since then working on any kind of a project, you can't know. Right. Um, and and I say this every single time. It's like the only people who might know or anybody who's involved in a Marvel Hmm. film that's about it you know right. um, sure. well put i like that <laughs> yeah no, that's um, good so i mean you know it, i've seen interviews of the producers in of uh the walking dead you hmm. know and they themselves you know they say the same thing we couldn't have anticipated this and uh, nobody can nobody can you know it, 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 i will see many audition notices and things like that. It's like, oh, we've got this great film. And, and it's like, you know, unfortunately, it's like, yeah, everybody thinks they have a great film, but you know, that's to you. You you, you can't, you have to be objective of what you have. Right. And you, you can't, it's, yeah, it's great to be positive. It really is. It's great to be positive, but you can't hype up your your project as, you know, it's going to, it's going to gain this when you you just don't know. Right. Yeah. No, no, I, I definitely appreciate that. No one can read the future. And uh, it, it's great to be able to have this vision in your head saying, oh, my God, this is going to be incredible. But you just never know. Yeah. Right. So no, I appreciate that. And off of that, you ran and you did some, um, you did the convention circuit for a little while, correct? Yeah, I, I did when I'm. When I'm asked, I still do it as well. I don't, I'm just not asked as often anymore. It's starting seems to be starting to kind of dwindle down a little bit um, because, frankly, I I need to get something else in my pocket, you know, because everything else that I've done, I've enjoyed and it, it's had its own successes, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing has quite matched the success success of Clerks. So until that happens, you know, right. Um, it's you know promoters are not going to be knocking down my door to get to the convention circuit. <laughs> I would love to be able to turn that around for you, uh, honestly. <laughs> I, I would. And and if any polls ever come up, who wants to see who at any upcoming conventions? I will put your name down because I would be <laughs> I'd be thrilled to meet you. I I truly would. Thank you. Uh, so, born in New York, lived in Jersey, obviously mm -hmm. for a while. Um. You ventured out, as many do, to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about your trip from A to B. Oh, gosh. Um, I've been out here now just a little over 20 years because I arrived uh, Memorial Weekend of 97. Um, for a while there, I thought it was 98, mm -hmm. uh, until I found a little journal when I occasionally put right in them. Um, but it's it's been a tough road. has not been easy whatsoever. Um, and anytime anybody ever asks me about uh, advice moving out here, I say it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. um, everybody that I've ever talked to that has moved out here, it's it's all the same thing. The first year is 
is really hard the first six months especially um, it's not as easy to find a job out here as you might think it might be um, because everybody out here is the actor searching for the perfect job for themselves is that, is that why you ventured out there with with the aspirations of hopes and dreams of being the, the next big star well no i i wouldn't say that i just it's it's it came to a point where i saw if i'm going to if if, if i wanted to do more I mm. needed to get myself out here. Ideally, the time to have moved out here would have been just after Clerks was made. Sure. But for me, I had um, a can't think of the word, but I had a child, and so she was too young for me to just pick up and move. Right. Um, it would have been too difficult mm. to make life as a single parent out here. Uh, so I didn't do that. I, I waited until she was old enough where she can make up her own mind, whether she wanted to stay or if she wanted to come out with me. And, you know, I would have hoped that she would have come out here with me, but, you know, 15 year old, you know, it's all about their friends. <laughs> I have a house full of them, trust me. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. As, as we mentioned before, I have, between my wife and I, eight kids ranging wow. from 12 to 19. So yeah. it's never a happy dinner table, let me tell you what. Not right. one night of the week. <laughs> yeah, so so anyway, um, I, I, out of the family, it's like, you know, did what we had to do to make it easy for her to stay where she stayed in the same school district and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then I came out here and, and to be honest, it's like, it, it's because that first year was so difficult. It's a good thing that she wasn't with me. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, eventually I kind of found my footing, finding jobs here and there. And, and, you know, it, it one thing that most people just aren't aware of, uh, is that, they think I get residuals. There are no residuals to get. Right. So yes, I have to find jobs wherever I can find them to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. to, I mean, and still 20 years later. Um, yeah, I could say the heck with it. Um, you know, I'm not going to pursue this acting thing anymore, the way some people might, might put it. Um, but I can't, I don't have it in me to s let it go. And it's not like I haven't done anything in the 20 years that I've been here. Right. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've created quite a, ne a network. And so, you know, and they say people become overnight successes and, and it takes 20 years to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me ask you a question. And I hope this isn't a, um, a sore spot. Um, Clerks 2. Mm -hmm. I was, I was honestly surprised not to see you in the film. I really was. Um, was there ever a opportunity for you or I don't I don't know how to, how to ask it. Um, oh, don't, don't be shy about the words. Just say it. All right. <laughs> Was it ever an option for you to have been in the film? Or did all of a sudden you read about it just the way everybody else did? Wow, Quirks too. Wow. Gee, thanks, Kevin. Um, I was never approached about it. Um, one thing that I kind of found out, um, and I don't know in relation to Clerks 2, like when that was, but at a certain point I had this one manager who um, – contacted uh, Kevin's people. Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of found out uh, that because I had turned down a role in Chasing Amy, I would never be asked to participate in another film. Right. And so I thought that came from Kevin. But fast forward uh, to, I think, two years ago, I did Miami, uh, uh, Florida, uh, Supercon. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, Brian, myself, uh, Joey Lauren Adams, Jason, we were all there. And so I got to meet Joey Lauren Adams for the first time. And so, in fact, uh, when I met her, like, I didn't know what I was going to say. Right. But I know I wanted to kind of broach the subject about Chasing Amy. Um, because other than Clerks, that's one of my other favorites of, of Kevin's films. And so I said to her, it's like, oh, we could have wound up working together. And she's like, oh, why? how? What happened? It's like, well, they had asked me to play your girlfriend in Chasing Amy. Right. And I didn't know how I was going to say this either. And she's like, oh, well, why didn't you? And it's like, I think I, let me see if I can remember what, I, what it was that I said. Um, I was afraid of challenges at the time. Um, Things were different a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, it's not about how I felt about, you know, gays or lesbians or anything like that. It's not, it wasn't about that. Okay. Um, it was about me doing a kissing scene with another woman. Right. Um, and being comfortable and, and challenged with that and all that kind of stuff. Um, because I was still pretty new to acting at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it. It's like Clerks was my first feature film sure. ever. I had done. I had the only thing that I had done was was theater at that point. Right. Um, and I would say maybe for about three or four years. Um, so, and 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 that was the truth. I was afraid of challenges, and even even after I moved out here to California, I would have to say that it was. I was here probably a good 10 years before I kind of did that mind shift uh, for myself to accept challenges and not be afraid of it. Because I said to myself, it's like, what am I more afraid of? Of actually making it or not making it? Right. Because yeah. that, that thought also was a fear of me, uh, for me as well, of actually making it, losing total anonymity and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, yeah, so, I can but, appreciate that and having to draw the line of what you're willing to do versus remembering it's a job, uh, it's acting, I'm getting paid, hired to do this certain scene. And then obviously mentally having to go through it in your head of, all right, can I physically live with myself knowing I did this, even though it is just, it's not me, it's the character. Actually, it's not, no, it, no, it wasn't even that. It wasn't even that I, uh, about whether I can accept myself or anything like that. It wasn't even that. It was, it was just, oh my god, I got to kiss this girl. You know, it's like it's bad enough. It's like you know when you do that first kissing scene with another guy on stage <laughs> or on camera. Uh, seriously. Okay. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> it's yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't about that. Okay. But um, but when I met Joey, it's like then like she was there with her husband, and so the four of us went out to dinner, and we kind of started talking about that situation again. And she said, you know, I don't think it was Kevin. That doesn't sound like Kevin. I bet you anything it was Harvey. Really? Yeah. Wow. That, hmm, you know what? I'll say it. That don't surprise me. Not at all. <laughs> Not at now, all. Now with all this exactly. kind of coming out, yeah, it's imagine like, that. Ah! Yeah, imagine that. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, like, well, I, so, yeah, because I said no to that. It wasn't about, it wasn't Kevin feeling, you know, pride, hurt, or anything like that. It was, it was Harvey Weinstein. It's like, and I, I can totally see that. It's like, she doesn't want to be in your movie, then fuck her, you know? Um, right. Not ever going to be in any of your movies that I finance again. Right. <laughs> wow. I, um, I got to thank you for that. I really do. Um, I, I, had, I was kind of beating around the bush thinking about our conversation today. And I had wanted to ask you about that, and you definitely dove into it. And I, I appreciate your honesty about that and opening up for it. I really do. No problem. Yeah, I mean, well, it, when all that was kind of breaking out, um, I actually was contacted by a journalist from Paris asking me if I had, if I had anything to say. Um, basically asking me if I had experienced anything um, mm. and not, not so many words. Um, but my response to her was basically, it's like, I can only vaguely remember meeting Harvey when we had uh, 
a premiere at the Hard Rock Cafe. Um, it was, we, we screened clerks, but, but it's like, I, I don't think I really had a direct meet with him. It's like, I might've been introduced and stuff like that, but nothing really happened. Thank God, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I really had nothing to say. And it's so, so thankfully it's like, I didn't experience what these women, but I, I stand in sol solidarity with that solidarity with them. So, sure. wow. So you're there, you, you've gone, you're in California. Um, any, how can I put it? I don't want to say regrets. Um, did you ever stop and honestly say, God, you know, maybe this wasn't the right thing to do. Maybe I should have just stayed on the East coast. If I, if I did it, it would have been that first six months uh, to a year. Um, mm -hmm. Cause yeah, I, I had plenty of moments that I was just basically crying uh, you know, wondering how I was going to be able to stick it out and and all that that kind of stuff, but I couldn't see myself moving back east. Um, and when I decided to move out here, like there wasn't that fear that most people should have, <laughs> especially moving out by themselves, sure, three thousand miles away. Um, I was very calm about the whole move. Um, but as hard as that first year was, I don't think I ever thought about moving back. Okay. I mean, if I had to, if I had no other alternative, yeah, I probably would have, but I just kept. So, now what about family? Family is where to you, um, are, have, have, has everybody, do you have how can I put it? When when you were younger, before you made the trip, you were honestly you obviously you were on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume that's where you were. You know, you were born in New York. Uh, so I'm assuming that the rest of your family was East Coast people. Mm -hmm. You made the trek out to the West Coast by yourself. So I'm just assuming. Obviously, it's been a long time now. Maybe some have moved here, there, whatever. Right. Um, so, do you still consider? East Coast to be home. That's where all my family is. Like I said, I know it's been a, a long time. So yes, yeah. California is your home now, obviously. Yeah, and and the funny thing is, it's like yeah, I still consider Jersey home, mm -hmm. but I consider this home as well. Right. So I I know they say it's like oh you can't have you can't have more than one home. And I'm like well yeah I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like I, I still have my sister who lives in Jersey. I have a brother who lives in Florida. My daughter who moved from Jersey to North Carolina to to Raleigh, North Carolina. My parents they have since moved to um, Puerto Rico, back back to their home state because um, okay. they're getting up there in age, and that's where there is a lot of family to still be able to take care of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some relatives here because uh, I had an aunt who, when I moved out here, I have had an aunt who still lived here, but she's m since moved to Florida. And so, but there's her, there was her extended family that's out here. So now they're my family here. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's quite diversified. Sure. I can appreciate that. Was it a big shock to the system? East coast, West coast, palm trees and surfboard. Yeah. No, because I mean, um, growing up, we, it's like uh, my siblings and I, we visited Puerto Rico quite a bit, um, relatives and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, warm weather. Once I, the only difference between Puerto Rico and here is a lot more humid over there. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, almost similar. Right. Sure. <laughs> and uh, but, yeah, the economy is a yeah. lot worse out there too. So, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so we're almost towards the middle of December. What are your um, what are your big holiday plans? You got you got anything set up already? Anything in stone? Holidays, Christmas, New Year's, anything? Nothing big. It's like I I usually go to cousins of mine that that is here in California, and uh, we just basically lay back. It's usually pretty chill and quiet. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I long for those days. Trust me. You know, um, I can tell you, it's like <laughs> as much as you love family and things like that. But when I was back East, it was always the, let's go, let's spend a little time at this house. 
no, we got to go. Thank you. It's like, all right, let's go have dinner at this house. It's all okay. Thank you. Spend a, you know, a couple hours and then go to the next house. Right. I don't miss that. I no. really don't miss that. <laughs> that. That is the one advantage to having a herd of kids is that you got to take two cars and no one wants to have another eight kids in their house <laughs> on Christmas, especially. So people usually just kind of make their rounds and uh -huh. even, even if they want to come stop by. So, right. I, but I do remember myself being younger, the single child, we always had to go make the rounds. So I can appreciate that. I remember I mean, that. I miss the family. I really do. Right. And the friends, but I don't miss the whole traveling all day. On right. The holiday. Right. <laughs> in fact, I love staying here in California during the holidays because everybody leaves. Well, now, so whereabouts in California are you located? In the valley. You're in the valley. Okay. So, uh, okay. Now, so you are, I've been watching the news a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I've been seeing horrific videos and pictures of these fires. Yeah. Uh, which I'm hoping you are nowhere near. Um, the nearest one, and I'm trying to be careful because I actually have a restraining order out and I don't want to give any details as to where I live. Uh oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so it, I'm, I'm in pretty, pretty much suburbia. Okay, you're safe. What's, we can leave it at that. Right. It's okay. like mountains are not very nearby that has all the foliage that burns. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> I didn't mean to. No, no, no. That's okay. Make it tough for you. And I do apologize. No, that's okay. Cause it's it, cause I've had a lot of people messaging me as well. And it's like, so it's, you know, it, it's, it's like I, I put out a little notice today because I had people messaging me and saying that's like, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm no, you know, nowhere near as the fires. The only thing that I'm having to deal with is smoke, depending upon where the wind is drifting in the ash. That's right. about it. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I think I remember seeing you posting that as a matter of fact on Twitter this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm glad to hear you are, are well. So outside of acting, mm -hmm. um, you are doing hair and makeup, correct? I do. So you are as a, now are you doing this in the film industry? Are you a stylist, salon work? So I, I do work in a salon in Studio City. Okay. Um, I do hair and makeup um, in the business, the entertainment business, but I don't really do feature films anymore or anything like that because then that's two to three weeks out of time that I wouldn't be able to audition or anything like that. I mean, at one point I did, um, but you know, cause you, you kind of look at it as, um, okay, I get to meet directors and other people. And, but when I was in the capacity of hair and makeup, even though they knew me from clerks or they might've seen clerks, they didn't see me as an actor. Okay. Well, so I, I, quickly realize it's like all right this this is really not lucrative in the sense of that particular aspect and it's like let me not take myself out of the possibility of auditioning and then you know having to take something else um so i'll do like one two three day jobs in okay. the business and mostly it's infomercials and things like that but um it, it's i work in a salon i do freelance hair and makeup for weddings um, working for somebody else whenever she needs a hand. Um, but I don't take on my own weddings unless it's, let's say they need me this weekend or, you know, in two weeks or something like that, because generally brides like to book six months to a year in advance. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing in that time. <laughs> 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 and you don't want to be telling a bride, you know, a few days before her wedding. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, booked a feature film so I can't do your wedding right yeah that would make for a bad night yeah yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, okay so <laughs> what's um what's the future line what do you got in plan for us well let's see um I've got a couple of films that basically just kind of there in the wings, just waiting okay. for them to drop and say, Marilyn, we're going to, we're ready to shoot. It's like, be ready, such and such date. 
Right. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've uh, had some auditions. I constantly looking for auditions. Um, I have this one project of my own. I didn't write the script. Somebody else wrote it, but I want to direct it. So basically, I need to kind of wow. put the whole thing together to be able to pitch it to somebody to hopefully get it funded. Well, good luck with that. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks. What, what, um, what genre of storyline have you written or come up with? Extremely, extremely, it's a heavy piece. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 let's just fit, see, let's just say that it'll fit the genre of what is going on today a little bit. Um, okay. And, and I really need to find the time to sit my butt down and really get things <laughs> kind of put together. Well, to definitely keep tabs on me with that because something like that, just hearing that coming from you has got me definitely interested and very, very intrigued. So uh, anything dealing with today's world <laughs> could be a huge comedy or it could be a complete um, horror film at best. Definitely so. not a comedy. I mean, it's not a horror film as far as genre is concerned. Right. But it's it's someone's horror right well yeah if you watch the nightly news just about anywhere it's yeah borderline horror in my opinion um, yeah i i well i i don't have cable haven't had cable in a long time uh because i can't afford it and honestly i don't miss it because i just don't want to watch the news anymore anyway right. um because i'm the type of person that it just the energy Yep. Just, and I can't I can't I can't take on the energy. Well, good for you. No, seriously, I I I, I wish you uh the best of luck with that. That that Thank could be you. a huge jump for you. That's uh very admirable. Thank to say you. the least. Seriously, I hope that works out for you. Thank you. Um I'm not gonna keep you much longer. I want you to be able to see the, the California sunset tonight. Um, oh, don't worry about it. It's like I you know, I, I'm in the middle of doing laundry. <laughs> I, I have got to admit, I, I I have had a lot of great conversations doing this pod shows. <laughs> I'm not saying that anyone that I have ever talked to has been, you know, Hollywood fake or anything of that nature. You have by far been the most <laughs> real person I think I have ever talked to. None <laughs> earth. You know, you're doing laundry. You're, you know, whatever. And thank you so much for this. It's it's it's. It's been real. I, Very, you know, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't put on any kind of pretentious attitude or or, or, or anything like this. Um, it's funny. Funny. It's like this This will kind of fit into this little thing. Um, because I'm in the process. I've been in the process now for last month of getting all of my materials together. Mm -hmm. It's like getting headshots together what I was going to be using because I got new headshots recently um, getting my demo reels put together and edited and re-editing and then re-editing again and getting the clips together and um, I'm part of uh, several groups uh, entertainment groups on Facebook and well this one site that we really need to be on for submissions Mm -hmm. They charge $22 a minute for your footage to be on there. What? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and then we have to, there's other sites that we have to put our stuff on that it's a little bit more affordable in one way, but not affordable in others, but still. So I got to be, and I have to be smart about my money, as cool. anybody does. Of course. And so I put a question into a certain casting director group site. And I asked, it's like, do casting directors like having a demo reel to view or do they like the individual clips? Mm -hmm. And I get this one guy saying, you sound like an entitled actor. I'm like, where in my, <laughs> where <laughs> in my little question do oh you even God. get that? Yeah, when it says, what is your preference? <laughs> 
Wow. And just because I said, it's like, you know, I want to be financially smart about it or something like that. And so mm. needless to say, I kind of, I didn't, grrr, you know, at him, but mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm sorry. No, I didn't say I'm sorry. I was like, I don't understand what issues you have with me. Right. I don't know how it is that you're reading this. Hmm. But I am not an entitled actor. You don't know me. You don't know anything about my life. Right. So, and, but there were some other people that like kind of went, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, dude, what is your problem? <laughs> and then he starts reading other things into other people's responses. It's like, dude, you really need to actually read or hear what it is that people are saying and not be reading things that aren't even there. Yeah. But anyway, so. <laughs> well, that that already sounds like bad news farther down the line even <laughs> just from the get-go by that so yeah um, yeah but uh, you know i i i as you said as we said earlier i do wear my heart on my sleeve i i pretty much sh overshare sure. <laughs> many a times right. uh, my life and you know but you know do I regret it? Not really. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, I try to be careful of what I say to people and how I say it, uh, you know, but we all, we all make mistakes in our lives, so. Wow, more honesty. I, I, lo I truly love this woman, I really <laughs> do. Now there's just, I don't wanna say no holds barred with you, but you're real. You know, you're not going to glorify anything. You're not going to tell me that, oh, ever since I moved out to California, it's been great. I've been to dinner every <laughs> night on the town. Everybody comps me. And I actually have people in the background that are doing my laundry for me. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's been nice. And it's, it's appreciated to hear that kind of realism. It, it truly is. Um, so I have one closing question for you. Mm -hmm. Um dating back with clerks and this really has nothing to do with the makings of or filming anything of that nature mm -hmm. do you still keep in touch with any of them friends brian and brian and scott um mm -hmm. and, and and ernie o'donnell it's like the thing is it's like whether i have their number on my phone or mm -hmm. their email address or not right for me Clark's is my family. So it's always nice to be with them. Now the ones that I, and, but especially the ones that I I've, I've known and, and do keep in touch with, mm -hmm. um, like Brian, Scott and Ernie, um, Brian and I, we knew each other before clerks. So okay. we, we did the theater circuit together. So we have that. They're my brothers, you know, that's great. From other mothers, from other mothers. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever throughout the years heard from, ran into, talked with Kevin? Just out of curiosity. I, I occasionally. Um, I was recently uh, at one of his Babylon shows out here. Oh, okay. Um, but it's, it's funny. Um, it's, it's like I say hello to, to Ralph afterwards. He's like, why didn't you let us know that you were here? I'm like, because I don't think about it. <laughs> um, he's like, well, th definitely let us know next time. It's like, okay. Because, um, you know, they'll do the shout out because it's like, the you know, this was around the time uh, for Stan Lee's uh, Comic Con. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and so the comic book guys, they were, they were there in the audience as well. And so they did shout outs to them nice. and things like that. And had they known that I was there, they probably would have done a shout out to me as well. But I just, again, I just don't think about it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not in that mindset and that men mentality that I need to actually be mindful of that. I, you know, I need to do that for me to, you know, get things kind of, Right, yeah, to help get you motivated, I don't want to say motivated, get your name no. out there a little more self-promoting, but yeah. then it's that whole, you know, the whole heart on the sleeve thing. You know, you're not there for you, so to speak. <laughs> right, right, I, right. I, I, I get that. I really do. <laughs> That's a very admirable trait, though. 
But at the same time, next time, we got to get out there with a little picket sign with your name. That way, whoever is up there can see that there you are. Right, right. I mean, you know, and, and the thing is, it's like uh, the couple people that I was there with, we were outside while, you know, waiting before they let people lean into the show and stuff like that. And we get to get into conversations with other people. And then some people did actually recognize me and they came over, said hello, took photos and stuff. But it, it, it's, 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 you know, sometimes it's, it's like, shh, don't. You don't have to. You don't have to announce to the world that I'm here, kind of a thing, you know. But mm -hmm. but then, but then I have to realize it's like um, you have to kind of let the world that you're there. Yeah, you really do. If you want, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to be in the world, I would assume in in the entertainment business, you've got to make sure that they know you are there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and I was actually leaning towards that. You know how often? I mean, your, your Twitter name, that clerk <laughs> girl. So, um. How often are you recognized? How often does somebody say, uh, um, wasn't that holy okay, shit? I don't think it's as often as it was anymore unless, you know, I don't realize that mm -hmm. right. people are. I mean, unless they're diehard Clerks fans, I don't think they really know. Right. Um, and and the, the, the whole um, Twitter handle that came about when I realized, oh, okay, I got to do Twitter, um, because people would come up to me, it's like, okay, you know, you know who you remind me of? <laughs> that, 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 they, they would say that girl from Clerks. So that's how it dawned. That's how that, it. Came. And that's how that Twitter handle came about. It's like, because I am that Clerks girl. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I you know, hey, it 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 does work. It does suit you. I'm <laughs> I'm not trying to say that you know that is. You know, she's the girl from Clerks, but you are, you know, you, you, you are, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I say that in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I, I definitely do. I definitely <laughs> do. Well, th this has been a complete honor. Um, being, you know, especially being a, a horror website, my last final question, what's your favorite horror movie? Ooh, so many. Tell me you got to have at least one horror movie. I see. There's are, you, this, are you honestly a horror fan? I know you. I know you've. I, I do. Seen. Yeah. No, I do. I do enjoy horror films. I. I but I enjoy sci-fi films and things like that. And sure. the thing with me, mm -hmm. I don't like. And it comes to the favorite food, fa favorite movie, fa anything. Okay. I don't want to have to choose one. I understand that. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I, can, I can appreciate that because you don't want to limit it. And right. I, and I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it's, so it's it, it, you know, it down. many, many of the horror films that many people have favorites of, it's they're, they're there as well for myself. Uh -huh. Um, the, the Friday, the 13th, the, the Hellraiser, the Jaws, the it, 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 gamut. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Well, listen, uh, I am going to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time for me for house of tortured souls.com. Thank you. Anytime you want to talk, please join us. Um, and definitely good luck with everything. Uh, Thank I you. hope that directing piece does come up for you. Thank um, you. I will definitely be looking out for that. And I will definitely be watching you on Twitter with that. And um, a very Merry Christmas to you. You too. Have a very Merry Christmas and a great and Happy New Year. And you do the same. You be safe and thank you again. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.